What's up YouTube? So a few weeks back I ordered for a SparkFan MP3 trigger. It is a board that allows MP3 files to be triggered from an SD card via a serial port or by connecting a jumper across its trigger inputs. I'd seen several videos online of what it was capable of doing and I'd also developed my own ideas of what to make with it. So I was very excited when I finally received one despite the 43 pounds plus shipping haul it had left in my pocket. On unboxing it, I noticed that the navigation tab was broken. This couldn't have happened during shipping because the broken plastic piece was not present in the packaging which was completely sealed. Anyway, this was not a big deal for me since I was more interested in controlling it via the serial port. The MP3 trigger board has a user guide that gives its specifications. Important to note is that it uses SD cards that are formatted FAT16 or 32 only. I had high capacity SD cards lying around but these were not able to work with the board so I had to buy a simple 2GB card and it worked fine. The MP3 trigger has a full duplex 8-bit serial port. Now duplex means that you can write to the board and it can also write back information onto the port. So I hooked it up to the Arduino serial port and wrote a simple program to enable communication on the two ports. The details of the commands are written in the user guide. A ski character or sent via the serial port will start a track or stop it if it was already playing. F will forward to the next track. S0 returns the firmware version installed on the board. S1 returns the number of tracks stored on the SD card and there are several other commands you can send. To make something more interesting with this board, I wanted to trigger the samples on the SD via MIDI. Now this is another drawback of this particular board because it does not have native MIDI support. I had to handle the MIDI input with the Arduino. So I added an optocoupler and made a MIDI input circuit with a 5 pin DIN connector. I was then able to trigger the samples on the SD card via MIDI, but that's when it dawned on me that this particular MP3 board at both is not polyphonic. Perhaps I should have done more research before purchasing. Now to be fair, SparkFan released this particular MP3 trigger around 2009 and they've subsequently made improvements on the concept of trigger boards. Around 2015, they released the Warp Trigger which is polyphonic and can play and mix up to 14 stereo tracks simultaneously. And that is at CD quality unlike the earlier MP3 trigger limited to a quality of 192 kbps. This one also has MIDI support via serial and MIDI pitch bend for samples which could be interesting to explore. Now around 2017, they released the Tsunami Super Wav Trigger. It has 32 voice polyphony, 8 audio outs, surround sound capability and an independent MIDI input circuit among others. Now should you buy this, the original MP3 trigger board? I would personally recommend that you buy the Wav Trigger. The Wav Trigger board was developed as an improvement on the MP3 Trigger as you can even read on the SparkFan website. The Wav Trigger has polyphony and MIDI support via serial and there's almost no price difference between the two. But if you have money and want to do a more involved project, buy the Tsunami Super Wav Trigger. With 8 routable outs, it opens up many possibilities. Now I wish I'd read all this before I ordered for the MP3 trigger. Anyways, I hope this video saves someone else the hassle. I definitely want to do a project with the Tsunami Super Wav trigger, but right now I still have a hole in the pocket thanks to the MP3 trigger board that I bought. Support me on Patreon, which is also where I post all the projects I'm working on first. Thanks for watching and see you again.